Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from Powersonic and Apprentice 1 to 1. You'll see I'm up on a roof here, we've been busy installing this one, the guys have got it all pinned down up here already. I'm not going to bore you with more roof work on solar jobs, I realise we've done probably three of these in a row now. So we're going to go inside and have a look at some of the testing. So we're going to look at testing our earth farm, which is down in the garden there, as you would have seen on some other videos, and some of the other testing that you do on both the AC and DC side with the solar systems. These are Trina 425 watt panels up here. We've got nine of them. There is a west facing roof as well, which is going to have another four panels on. They're yet to be installed as yet because the scaffolders haven't quite got sorted out. If I can figure out how to spin you around the right way, I can show you our outward aspect so you can see here we've got open fields in the background and tree coverage so this is going to be affecting the shading factors of the roof that you need to apply to your calculations now I'm sat at roof height here the top of the rear kind of doesn't clear the top of these trees so in winter they're definitely going to be a factor but obviously they won't be in leaf you can see down there is the is the shed and that has got the earth farm underneath the play park for the kids down there for those of you who follow the channel you'll see me putting that together and we have got our roofing system up here so you can see the scaffolders have got some nice side rails on there they haven't quite finished off um, down this side of the house so we're waiting for them to come back and put us some more um, panels, sorry, scaffold down this side. If I spin you around, I can probably show you a bit of that. So, west facing roof, it's late on in the evening here, so you can see if I straighten out the camera, it's in the sunshine still. So, the sun kind of sets off over in the distance that way. So the idea is we'll get a few panels on here. Obviously there's the chimney as well, which is going to affect things. So we're going to have a few fun and games with that, but that's the plan. Like I say, these panels are all on and done and dusted. We're in our spacings for these fixings, as we've spoken about before. These are the Trina 425, so you need to be between three and 400 mil from the top or bottom edge of the panels, as these are. We'll jump inside, have a look at that, and I'll move on with the video. Okay, so you can see I'm at the control area, we'll call it. It's the cupboard. But we've got our inverter here, it's powered up, there's a little bit of solar generation. It is now 20 to 6 in an evening. As I showed you up on the roof, the sun's kind of moved away from that south facing roof now and it's more on the west facing one where we yet to get our panels. West ring, as Matthew's labelled up that string over there. We've got some test gear out, we're going to have a look at the values for ZE on the earth farm. So for those of you who aren't aware and haven't watched at the shed, down at the end of my garden, I've got a few earth rods, conjure disc, bits of copper in the ground, all kinds of stuff to give us a really good ZE onto that. I've dropped off onto just the two earth rods for this particular earth down to the EPS mode. So when we're running in island mode, that basically comes back up the steel wire armor. I took three cars down there when we installed that cable. So we've got a nice 10 mil um, cable coming back here with that earth connection on it. It then runs straight into the changeover switch for those of you who watched the first part of this video series, you will see that in my meter cabinet is where all the main earthing terminals are. So when we swing the changeover switch, which is just over in this corner, if you can see it, just behind me, when we swing that over into position two and we're connected to the EPS mode on this, the earthing at the main incoming terminal is totally disconnected. Now that would include the bonding if there was any in place here, but as I've shown you in the video, we've got plastic gas and water coming into here. So there's none of that to worry about or consider in terms of the earthing system within my property. We just have to worry about connecting onto the DNO's earthing system and utilizing our own. The reason for that is if we was to have any faults within our installation while there's an issue out on the DNO network and that was to go down the earthing system, potentially affecting what they're doing, we don't want any of that. Basically, when we're in island mode, we become our own little state, our own little national grid, and we don't want any of that to go anywhere else. So if I swing that switch over, we should get a value of ZE based on the earth electrodes, if I've set this up correctly. But before we do that, we'll get in close, we'll have a look at the TIS MFT Pro, taking a ZE, well, it's gonna be more of a ZS from the local socket circuit on these boards. I'll show you when we get in closer. We'll do it off the supply as earth first, and then we'll swap over and have a look at what we've got when we're in EPS mode. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at my system here. You can see I've got the changeover switch. At the minute we're in the grid position, which means we are connected to the, the DNO um, supply network. We're connected to the earthing system. It's a TNCS. Those of you who watched the prior video will have seen in the meter cabinet outside. 
we have got an earthing connection in there which then feeds on this 25 mil submain to the changeover switch. This breaks off that connection when we switch it into the off position and then also when we swing into the EPS mode it maintains that disconnection with any of the grids, conductors and the earthing. Now I do have um, the earth farm down at the shed so for those of you who've watched the earlier videos again you will have seen that so at the shed we've got a an array of earthing systems down there but essentially sorry earthing components rather than systems for our electrodes um, and we've got a really low value of impedance on our ZE down there it's, it's under two ohms which is fantastic and we can run that in parallel with the DNO's earthing arrangement to my property so I've got that set up where the earthing cable comes down from the shed now straight into the earth bar of this consumer unit and that's sat there as a supplementary um, earth to the DNO's earth on the TNCS system. Because we're under 20 ohms that's going to be helpful and it can be workable when you go into island mode to maintain the connection with the grid's earth and also your own earthing system. So you would disconnect the line and neutral from the grid but you could keep the earth connection in place and run your electrode in parallel to it and also during times of normal operation in grid mode if there was something external to my property like a pen fault or some diverted neutral currents or whatever's going on in there having that electrode or earth farm as I've got here with that low impedance value is helpful to maintain a safe state and safe level of touch voltages within my installation. So that's an important factor when we're thinking about going into EPS mode, which we'll speak about in a minute. Um, but just to run through the schematic of the system, so you can see we've got the strings on the roof and we've got the panels. Obviously only one of the strings is in place at the minute, so that's that nine panels on the south facing roof. We've got our DC isolators, which Matt threw over to here. We've got our battery, which is coupled onto the inverter. And then we've got our generation meter, the AC isolator, the consumer unit, and then the meter in external to the building in the meter cabinet on the DNO side. Now, more times than not, when you swing into EPS mode, so we've moved this changeover switch across, it's gonna be at times when the grid is in a faulty condition. So the grid's gone down, could be for a number of reasons, just a loss of supply due to um, a breaker operating, for example, or it could be due to something along the lines of a pen fault, a neutral going down. Either way, there could be a faulty condition on that system. So you wanna be cutting off any connection to that for your own safety but also for people working on that equipment safety so any voltages or fault currents that you might produce in terms of your own equipment can't then enter their network and put them at any risk either so there's a bit of a safety consideration both ways round and equally if the grid is in a fault state due to a pen fault condition obviously there could be issues with a rising voltage on the earthing within an installation so the fact that we've got that parallel earth connection um, with a good electrode system in the garden is helpful to us again to keep those touch voltages down. Now if that electrode was just an earth rod outside and it was measuring say 150 ohms it wouldn't really be suitable to help us put in parallel with the supplier's earth to offer any kind of benefit in terms of pen faults. It would just be there for us really to utilise when we did switch over into our island in mode and again when you did that you would really be looking at disconnecting your earth connection as well at that stage and just working off the electrode itself. So you would essentially become an island with a TT rod and you just make use of that. Um, and again, there's factors around that which get complicated to do with the bonding. Because so obviously if I did have metallic services coming into my property, I don't in this case, but if I did, then they could potentially import some of those voltages into my premises still because they still need to be bonded even though we are on the electrode and they will be bonded next door as well and they could produce um, a voltage in my installation because of that which is why you would still need to bond it to your TT earth electrode if that makes sense because whatever way we go about trying to achieve an island in state in most locations we still got that common denominator that connects much of everything together and that is the mass of earth so we've got the buried services we've got our earth electrodes they all do form a connection point in the mass of earth unless you're on the top of a hill in the middle of nowhere and when the grid is in a faulty state there could be things going off that can give a rising voltage on that so having a low impedance earth electrode when you are considering using um, an EPS state which is what I'm trying to get to with all of this waffle 
is that you do need as lower impedance value as possible. They still give that maximum figure of 200 ohms. If you're just going to use an F electrode and set up a TT system of your own, if you're wanting to put um, an electrode in parallel with the DNR's earthing system, really you want to be getting that under 20 ohms, ideally under 10, to offer some real value in terms of touch voltages and mitigation against some of those DNR derived faults that can present on the earthing system. So I hope that makes sense. Let's move on. Okay, to show you all here, we've got that little socket which is right next to the consumer unit. It comes straight off that board, very short length, 2.5 mil T&E. So we're going to imagine that that's our ZE measurement. As we know, there's no bonding or anything to worry about. There is no real supplementary earth paths whatsoever on this one. It's going to be as close enough as good enough. So we'll have a look at that and see what values we get. I'll have to spin you around to this side of the cupboard because somebody has built the doors in the middle, which is not ideal, but we can have a go at that now. So if I drop you down and you see we've got the MFT Pro Plus to bring it in a little bit closer. And step back behind the camera and see if we can get it in some light you guys can see. So if we go to the loop impedance, uh, if that's coming up on camera, you can see we've got 249 volts between line and earth and 249 between line and neutral. And again, this is on the um, supplier's earthing system. So if we hit test, we would expect to see values that we would normally get on a TNCS earthing arrangement. So this is the um, TIS MFT Pro Plus actually, so it's running through this process of gathering as our ZLN and ZLPE. So we've got our ZS value here of 0 0.34, so we're towards the upper edge of what the limit is on that. And you can see the loop online and neutral, it's consistent, it's the same, it's a TNCS arrangement. Again, we've got a bit of impedance through our test leads, I haven't nulled them before I've done this, I should have done, my bad. And also the terminals within the socket, the short length of cable leading out from the RCBO, we've also got a bit of uplift in that as well to factor. So it's not super duper accurate, but it's going to give us a very good idea. So I now need to swing the changeover switch into position 2. I'm going to do that offload, so I'll turn everything off on the board, swing it over into position 2, and then put everything back on load. Okay, so this is now the exciting part. The um, Solax inverter has swung over into EPS mode. It's now outputting power back into my install. We're in position 2 on the changeover switch, so we've got power coming off the inverter into the changeover switch and then back out and into the consumer unit. We're totally disconnected from the supplier's earth. You can see here I'm measuring 230 volts now between line and earth and line and neutral. So if I hit test, we should, fingers crossed, get a value of loop impedance. Again, the line and neutral loop and the line and protective earth. We'll also get a value of prospective fault current, which could be an interesting number to look at. So you can see here we've got a value of 1.43 ohms and another value of 1.46 ohms on the line and neutral loop. And you can see our PFC and PSC is around 120-ish amps. So that's the maximum amount of fault current you're ever going to see. So you need to factor that in with your overcurrent protective devices. If you need to see um, a high value for instantaneous operation on that time curve, it is a factor when you're running, running in EPS mode. But yeah, very interesting. Shows my earth farm is pretty damn good down there. And for those of you who've watched that series, you'll see that's consistent with the values of both ZE and RA from down at that shed. So we know it's doing its job. So we've now got the inverter coming back to life. It's seen that the power's been restored. There is currently um, a little bit of solar generation still going on, which is good to see. Got the test results for the, the ZE on both the TNCS earth connection and also on the earth connection through the EPS mode. Now, in most cases, you're not going to get a really low value of ZE or RA when you are on a single earth electrode. You're usually going to be measuring in the tens of ohms. And ideally, you want to be trying to get a figure under 20 ohms, close to 10 ohms as a minimum. But, you know, it's one of those where if you're going to start driving loads of rods into the ground in urban areas, you're going to be encountering other risks and potentially picking up those overlapping PME earthing systems anyway. So I think it's um, sometimes better left to the experts if you are watching this as a solar and EV enthusiast wanting to get stuck in yourselves and start going off grid 
really do consult and speak with a local electrician because they're going to be helping you achieve this in a safe way. I was very lucky. I'd already put loads of arthrods and stuff in my garden to make YouTube videos. They came in handy in the end, totally by accident, and we've got a suitable measurement of around one and a half ohms. And obviously that'll fluctuate on the time of year, the ground conditions, and also what this thing's doing. It's all variable to temperature. There are other factors kicking in all of the time, so you need to allow some tolerance within the system when you are taking those measurements, factor that in. Um, the ZE measurement, or the ZS, as I explained on the TNCS system, we did have impedance through the RCBO. These are Proteus double pole modules. They could be adding a little bit into the um, circuit themselves. We've also got the test lead. We've got the contacts through the socket front. It is an old one we've repurposed that was already in this cupboard. It's not a brand new one. And the little bit of wire from the consumer unit to the socket. So it's not a super duper accurate measurement of a ZE, but even in the worst case circumstances, we know it's good enough. And um, yeah, that's happily doing its thing. Now we've got some solar generation kicking off some free electricity. I say free, there's been quite an expense in putting this system into place. For those of you who are following along and you're considering having some solar panels and battery storage put onto your property, the payback periods at the current energy prices typically are between six and 10 years does vary depending on how much energy you actually consume, your individual circumstances, the size and orientations of your roof. There are lots of factors and also the tariff that you're paying to your current supplier. And please do keep in mind that energy prices are currently expected to fall. And as it does, if it does, those payback periods grow in time and get longer. So it's not something that is going to stay fixed where you buy into this system and you're going to have your money back in six years. It could be two years down the road we're back paying energy prices we had in 2019. So make these decisions with your eyes wide open and your mind fully switched on to the problem you're trying to solve. Obviously, if it's more environmental and you're wanting to generate your own power to use to save the planet, that equation doesn't ever change. It's fixed based on the journey the sun makes across your roof space. And all of those calculations can be made by an MCS installer they should be doing that at the proposal stage we certainly do for all of our clients if you're in the yorkshire region please do get in touch with us we've updated our website so it's powersonic.co there's loads of information on there we're also packing out our youtube channel with loads of solar demonstrations to try and grow our reach and gain some more customers in this exciting new market that we're trying to push ourselves into Matty and Nathan, as I've said before, are super keen for this to be our direction of travel. I've really enjoyed learning about all this and getting stuck into the technicalities of it. And yeah, we'll just see where it goes in the future. If you have any questions about my system, this is a Solax 7.5 kilowatt inverter. Obviously, it's never going to be peaking at its maximum rating. I've sized it based on the fact that I could add more strings in the future, DNO approvals permitting. And the difference in cost between a 6 kilowatt and a 7.5 kilowatt was very minimal so it made sense to future proof to that extent equally we've got space for more batteries down here at the minute we've just got a singular six kilowatt that's 5.8 kilowatt hour batteries i know some people get upset with me saying six kilowatt instead of six kilowatt hour or amp hours madness you know what i mean but we've got space for another one down there as well should we need it and um, yeah it's all set to go now we can see what this generates i will report back as the weeks and months move on and let you know if it compares to the mcs calculations we've made I'll try and get our proposal that we did on easy PV and open solar linked into this video somehow. Maybe on the website, I'll drop a link in if I can get that sorted out. So you can go and have a look at that and see exactly the system I've spec'd. And then we can compare that to what it produces in the future. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching this one. I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you again on another video soon.